So, Mr. Governor, thank you very much for talking to us. Let's first of all look at the new ECB president, Madame Lagarde. Was it a surprise to you that she got nominated? Uh, the agreement which happened last week uh, in Brussels is very good news. It's one sign more, if you allow me, that we all know that the decision-making process is, in Europe is slow, is complex, but at the end of the day, Europe and France and Germany together are able to make decisions and to make excellent decisions. Christine Lagarde, after Jean-Claude Trichet, after Mario Draghi, will be a great president for the ECB and she will have my full support in the governing council. What kind of monetary policy do you think she will stand for? Because the market clearly thinks she will be very pragmatic and not too much looking at, yeah, sort of dogmatic monetary policy uh, restrictions like normal. So if we speak about monetary policy, we have several governing councils to come. Uh, in the next month, uh, including with Mario Draghi. Uh, and if and when needed, there must be no doubt about our determination to act and our capacity to act. I repeat, if and when needed. Yes, that's clear. I mean, yeah, the ECB, especially Mario Draghi, but you also have been repeating that. But looking at um, the current uh, set, uh, yeah, plan for QE, or set up for QE, you really have to change things then. Would you be ready to change? Uh, let, let, let me stress one thing. We look at the markets, but we are not market dependent. Uh, we are data dependent. And if we look at the economic sign signals, there is a continuing slowdown, but there are also significant wage increases, plus 2.5% in Q1 in the Eurozone, significant jobs creations on both sides of the Atlantic. So let us wait for our next governing councils, and there are several to come, to assess the data and then to decide. This is what I call, what I always call, pragmatism. But would that mean that you will, um, by any means, wait um, for December? Because then you have the full new data set, the, the, the projections, or would you be No, ready? no, no, no. As said, we have several governing councils to come. <laughs> okay, let's look at the negative deposit rate, because you um, were one of the members of the governing council who was also thinking about perhaps it's not a good idea to drive it even lower in case we have another rate cut. So what's your view here? Should we think or rethink the negative deposit model? Uh, let me stress one thing. Many things are possible, but nothing is decided today. And again, let us be pragmatic in our next meetings. We have a full quartet of possible instruments. We have forward guidance. We have negative interest rates associated with mitigating measures for the banks. We have liquidity provisions, such as TLTRO3, and we have our stock of purchase assets. So we will assess the data and we will decide accordingly. But I will not comment on any of this possible instrument within the quartet. Then looks, let's look at the economic picture, because it seems that the uncertainty is just not going away. Um, how concerned about, are you about the effects it will have on the real economy and that's also on your policy outlook? Uh, I couldn't agree more. The main threat to global growth at present is uncertainty, and let us be clear, uncertainty created by trade tensions and world escalation. Uh, so the priority is to reduce this uncertainty. And here we will do our duty as central bankers, but monetary policy cannot do everything. Monetary policy has no magic wand, cannot make miracles. Uh, and it's up to political leaders to reduce these uncertainties, sometimes self-created. Yeah, it seems that currently... We, we cannot compensate for trade tensions, let us be clear. Yeah, and just to perhaps ask you again on that, because uh, it seems that the only, like, uh, sort of um, certain component in markets currently are central banks, because if you promise to do something, you will do something, whereas politicians, especially the Trump uh, yeah, administration, is inserting so much uncertainty. So what needs to be done to, like, get the situation back in a more stable... So I appreciate the praise for central banks and the confidence they deserve, but again, we have a mandate 
we will fulfill this mandate without any doubt, but with pragmatism, as said, if and when needed. But we cannot go beyond our mandate. And economic policy and reducing uncertainty, it's up to a consistent economic policy by other policy makers. Monetary policy cannot be the only game in town or in, in the world, on the global scene. And protectionism clearly is today the threat number one to growth, including in the US, including in the US. Let's look at monetary policy. Bank of International Settlement recently came out with a comment that actually the um, effectiveness of monetary policy, if, uh, the, the uh, policy stance is ultra loose, is actually diminishing the longer it lasts. So is that something you are also thinking about? Uh, about the estimates of the efficiency of monetary policy, we are, there is a strong convergence within national central banks in the euro system that if you look at the five years between 16 and 2020 so of unconventional monetary policy its average effect is about plus 0.4 percent yearly in inflation as well as in growth so it's significant but again it's data dependent the G7 will happen here in France, in Biarritz, very soon at the end of August. So um, perhaps you could give us perhaps an idea of what you want to achieve uh, at that meeting in France. Um, we are very proud to be to chair, to chair the G7. There is a, a hot issue, so to say, which is a project of stable, stable coins, such as, such as Libra. So we decided with Bruno Le Maire to put in place a task force shared by Benoit Curry precisely the day when the project uh, of Libra was announced. So we were very quick and we want to have a holistic approach. If we can reduce global uncertainty, it's welcome. Uh, international taxation is clearly a priority for us. Taxation of corporates on a fair basis. And if I can add one issue which is very important in this era of technological progress, cybersecurity. We, each of our jurisdictions made progress, but we need a better and a stronger international coordination. Um, there seems to be also some calls uh, against currency manipulation. Mm. Do you think it will be one item on the agenda as well? Uh, on monetary policy, let me be extremely clear. Our aim is domestic, it's price stability, it's our mandate. We don't, have, we don't target exchange rates. And we all said in our G20 communication that we don't target exchange rate for competitive purposes. So it is and so it will remain. Uh, I will not comment on any specific tweets. But let me add on monetary policy in the uh, uh, euro system that we are predictable in our orientation, but we are not pre-committed in our decisions. And this will not be discussed in the G7. It will be discussed in the next governing council meetings. Do you think it, uh, the topic of more fiscal spending will be discussed? Because it seems kind of the flavor of the day or the weeks or the months mm. that um, fiscal spending is again en vogue. So is that the uh, way Annette, forward? Annette, your point is important. We as central bankers are independent. It also means that we are independent from the flavor of the day. Uh, and fiscal policy can be useful in countries which have fiscal space and for expenditures which are increasing the potential growth for the future, especially investment expenditures or education expenditures. So we should be a bit more specific, country specific and quality specific, uh, if I can stress it, in having fiscal recommendations rather than saying it's time to spend more full stop. So, so, this would be really oversimplistic. Uh, one last question on what you think the market is actually pricing. And I ask that question to Mario Draghi as well, whether he thinks that the bond market, looking at how negative the bond market is, is really pricing in a, a massive recession, or is it just a mispricing of the situation? What's your view? Uh, I will not comment market pricing. As said, we look at the market, but we are not market dependent. We look at the data. Yeah? Uh, and we will look closely uh, at mixed signals we see from uh, economic data and uh, decide accordingly. 
So perhaps um, one last question on whether you would like to convey anything else or what are you looking for from today's conference? Uh, it's, this, con this conference is about trust and trust is a key value, not only in this country, in France, uh, and reforms introduced by government help for, for trust. I stress it as a fully independent central banker, but trust is also a key value on the global stage. We as central bankers are the warrants of this monetary trust, and believe me, we will do our job. But trust goes beyond monetary policy and central banks, especially for trade policy. There is no stronger priority as to reduce trade uncertainty at present. Thank you very much. Please.